Why do we work hard to solve small problems? Why do we reinvent ourselves and our clients over and over? And why are we giving away marketing strategy for free? It's time to bring home bigger paychecks. It's time to create the lifestyle we deserve and to make a greater impact. This is the Fractional CMO Show, and I'm Casey Stanton. Join me as we explore this growing industry and learn to solve bigger problems. Hey, it's Casey, and welcome back to another episode of the Fractional CMO Show. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about keeping it simple for your clients. So what's important here? What's important is that most businesses are simple. And, it, and it's complexity that might get our attention and complexity that feels fun. L- let me tell you a story. So I like analog photography. I've got a smattering of cameras that I'm looking at in my office. I've got, um, my favorite is a Hasselblad 500 CM. I just love that camera. It's really neat. Um, the way that the lenses connect with the bayonet system, the six by six film back, the waist level viewfinder, the way that like when anyone looks at through the viewfinder, they're like, whoa, that's digital. It's like, no, that's, that's not. That's actually just light reflecting off of um, a mirror and going underground glass. It just looks like that, right? Super fun. Um, and, and I really love the work of taking a complex photo, like thinking through, okay, I'm going to go on this hike. I'm planning a hike right now with my son um, on Friday, and I'm thinking, okay, where are we going? What are we doing on the hike? What camera should I bring? Oh, I should bring that. Oh, what else am I going to bring for it? What, what film should I bring? What's the weather going to be? What's the ISO for the film? It's going to be a really beautiful vista that we're going to. We're going up to the Appalachian Trail. Um, so maybe I want to bring a, uh, one of my longer lenses. I've got like a 150 millimeter lens or a hundred and yeah, 150 millimeter lens that, that can, uh, work for the Hasselblad. Do I want that? Or do I want something a little bit more, uh, wide, right? Do I want the, um, the 80 mil, which is kind of like your standard 50 mil length on that medium format? Oh, maybe I want this, uh, this other Hasselblad that I have, which is the super wide. It's a really fun camera. It's almost a point and shoot. Um, that's a that's a much wider camera. Do I want to bring that instead? Right? And I'm like thinking through all of this stuff, and I'm thinking through the complex image that I want to create, the complexity of it all, right? And I think about that, and I think about like the effort and the work to come up with that photograph. Do I have all the gear? Am I bringing my light meter? What light meter do I want? The one on my phone, or should I bring my Sekonic, or should I bring the Pentax, you know, digital spot meter? Like, like what am I trying to do? And, and should I bring any glass filters to go on the lens to change colors because I'm going to be shooting in black and white or maybe I'm going to shoot in color, right? It should be the full color change, right? So I like think through all of this stuff and it's like a highly complex thing to do. And part of me enjoys the complexity. I mean, honestly, I do because I take great photos with, uh, I have a Nikon Z6. It's a really wonderful digital camera. It's not terribly expensive and it takes beautiful photographs. It's full frame, it's my first full frame digital camera. When I shoot it, I just am really like smitten with the photos. So why am I gonna bring the Hasselblad when I could probably arguably take a confidently better photograph on the Nikon? Well, cause sometimes I like the complexity of it. Sometimes I like to work a little hard to get something. I don't know, it just feels fun. There's, there's kind of a, a complexity to it that gets my attention, that holds my attention. It feels like I had to really work it, right? Like maybe that's fun for you too. Maybe there's something in your life where there's an easy way to do things in a more complex way and you just like the more complex way for whatever reason. Maybe you really like to cook and you like things to be really complex, right? Like you like to add these different herbs to things and do reductions and um, you know baste it and whatever you're doing to really make the meal that you're making more complex, more interesting. The question though is, at the end of the day, does it deliver a better outcome with the complexity? And I think with like the Hasselblad as an example, I don't know, maybe. I've definitely taken some photos on the Hasselblad that I'm really, really happy with. But generally speaking, I could take much better photographs and much faster um, with, with a digital camera, right? The Hasselblad, I can take 12 photographs on a film roll and then I have to take that film roll and take it into a lab and wait always longer than you want to wait. Like, I don't know, a week, two weeks to get the film back uh, as scans. And then I have to go in and pick up the negatives and, you know, do with that what I want. So 
when I think about taking a great photograph of this trip and I kind of visualize where I want to go and what I want to do, I think, what's the right camera? And I'm drawn to two different things. One is the outcome of the photograph, and the other one is the fun of making the photograph. At the end of the day, though, if I show my wife two photographs, one on the digital camera, one on the Hasselblad, she doesn't really care that one was on the Hasselblad or one was on the digital camera. That's not important to her, right? She's not going to be like, oh, look at that. I, I really noticed the way that, you know, uh, colors render on uh, Portra 800 um, better than it renders on this Sony sensor inside of the Nikon. She doesn't really notice that, right? That's not important to her. She's going to look for the outcome. Does the photograph capture a mood? Does it make her feel a certain way? Is it a photograph of our son? Does that make her feel a certain way? Like, that's what's going to be important to her. So with this idea in mind, let's take it to business. When we do business, right? When a company has a business and they leverage marketing, if you put a creative marketer in the seat of driving campaigns and outcomes, oftentimes they're going to do creative stuff. I remember when I first heard about Ryan Dice's idea at Digital Marketer around this like $7 tripwire whatever, $47 core offer, $297 profit maximizer, or whatever the price points are. But this idea of like bring people in and upsell, 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 upsell um, the value ladder until you, know, you break even and then finally make a profit. And I remember how much I like that. It's like, ooh, what's the smattering of products that we could create? And what's the logical next step? And how do we not give enough away not give too much away early on so that they're kind of forced to finish the sentence by buying the next product and the next one. Oh, what are the email series? What's the abandoned cart series? Let's do remarketing specific to this audience and this message. And on and on with complexity. And while that was fun for me, like I really enjoy that, and maybe you do too, it's not necessarily the fastest way from point A to point B. The fastest way to point A to point B might be a direct offer. Hey, we've got this thing. It's $97. Do you want it? Yes or no? If yes, buy here. Right? Simple. In like the, let's say, B2B SaaS space, what do SaaS businesses look for for success? What are their metrics of success? Well, it's just a few things, really, right? Like the true metrics of success. If we boil it down to its basic measurables, it's the number of demos requested, the number of demos attended, and the percentage of people who receive a demo of the software and buy. Like, that's it. At the end of the day, if there's only three numbers that they could track, it'd be those three. And then maybe they'd also track things like stick rate or refund rate or, um, you know, on the marketing side, we might say stuff like the uh, average uh, visitors a day to the page, the conversion rate to book a um, demo, um, you might talk about price point, average order value, number of seats purchased. Sure, those things are important, but at the end of the day, the lifeblood is demos, just book demos. So the point of this podcast today is to get you to think of this sim simple outcome and not get lost in what you probably enjoy in marketing, which is like the fun, the campaigns, the, the kind of miscellany that's there that you could apply to campaigns, and it can feel like a fun brain scratcher to say, like, how do I apply this new idea to this old business or, or whatever? And I just want you to think back on what's simple. What does the company need? If, it, if they could only have one or two or three outcomes, what would they be? And they're not marketing outcomes. Most likely, businesses don't care about marketing outcomes. They probably care about sales outcomes. So what are those one, two, or three sales outcomes? Simplify. Don't get lost in the unnecessary details. This is also how you stay elevated to solve bigger problems. A lot of marketers get pulled down into the details of things that don't matter. For example, oh, the click-through rate of this ad versus that ad, and why do we think this one's better, and what do we want to test here to increase the click-through rate? Like, It's not a bad question to ask, but it's a very finite question and I like asking bigger questions, which would be something like, 
How do we double the amount of visitors to the website? How do we double the conversion rate of visitors to demos booked? How do we double the rate of people who book a call to the people who attend? Like those questions are much bigger and much better to be asking, and they're simple. If you can't draw the logic of your client's business out on a napkin with a Sharpie, it's probably unnecessarily complex. You need to boil it back down to the basics. Don't get lost in complexity for the sake of complexity. Da Vinci said it best. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Keep it simple. When your client tries to throw new things in, it's a campaign, it's an idea, it's a tactic, it's whatever, boil it back down to its basic ingredients and figure out where that slots in. Don't get lost in doing a performance max campaign. Consider instead, how do you apply paid advertising or display network paid advertising or high volume, low quality traffic? What do you do with high volume, low quality traffic where you're sending in a bunch of hay and a little bit of needle is in there, right? Like, is that something you can work with? Yes or no. Solve that problem, then shop for the the traffic that you can bring in instead of saying, how do I take this one idea and apply it to the business? Right? How do I add this complexity of just doing Google Performance Max or just doing Rumble Ads or just doing some other ad platform or some other thing? Instead of applying that one thing to the business, boil it down to what category it's in, what, what kind of pillar in the business it serves or supports and see if, first of all, it's worth doing and if it is, what's the simplest method to get it working sooner than later. So another example is um, if, you're, uh, if you're working with a company and they're doing outbound texting, right? They're like texting with, let's say there's a demo booked and they text with the person and you have one person on the sales department and you wanna expand that and get more people in the sales department, you'll need more texting numbers. But now with the 10 DLC regulation bottleneck, it's really hard to get a um, text number to use. So you have this idea and you already have one person who's using it, but you can't get new numbers for all your new salespeople. Well, the simple answer is just have everyone use the same number until you can get it to be perfect in the future, right? Simple right now. Hey, we've already got tech. Let's just use it. It's not, it's not the most comprehensive. It doesn't uh, show us the user that's sending the text message and that's a little annoying and in the future we'll fix it. But right now, we'd rather get to market. We'd rather go simple, right? Simple. We're all going to use the same tool, all going to have the same login. Kind of sucks, but that's what we're doing. Go with it. Much better to be there and move quickly than it is to delay and wait for perfection, add unnecessary complexity, things like that. Okay? So business is simple. Netflix. And we think, wow, Netflix is a very big business. And maybe in two, it's a two-sided business. But let's just speak on the customer acquisition side, not unlike the um, uh, you know, producing films and movies and um, TV series and uh, you know, buying rights to those and that kind of stuff. We're just talking on the consumer side. The consumer side, it's easy. Get customers, keep customers. That's it. That's, that's, that's Netflix's business. Get customers and keep customers. So along the way, they're going to be doing things like maybe adding ads back or increasing the price and seeing if you're going to bar, uh, you know, um, the f- quit the service. Didn't they go from like six ninety nine to nine ninety nine to see if anyone you know quit because a six and a nine look a lot like probably on a lot of people's credit card statements. Probably not a big deal, but it allowed them to increase their revenues by three dollars per customer, which is probably a lot of money. So they're trying to just get customers and keep customers. That's simple. When they start thinking about this really complex stuff and they don't come back to these kind of core elements of the business, which is get customers, keep customers, then they're, they're playing a game that they're bound to lose ultimately because they're going to run after an outcome that isn't the core outcome. Okay, so that's it. That's what I want you to do. Just kind of question everything that a client throws at you, question all of your ideas, and just go simple, simple, simple. Doing few things well, you'll be a winner. That's it. Do very few things in marketing, but do them exceedingly well, you'll be a winner. If the client wants to be on all the social networks, just be like, hey, we're going to start with one. Let's start with LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or whatever. And then once you master that, move to the next one, move to the next one, move to the next one. Simple first. 
Don't do everything all at once. Keep it really simple so you can maximize the results wherever you are. All right? If you want our help in um, helping you build a fractional CMO practice, ugh, man, I just had a great call today with our members. Um, we had someone close a, uh, their first sale, $5,000 a month. Awesome. Thrilled for them. Had another person um, close a $5,000 a month uh, that moved to $7,500 a month uh, for the second month and thereafter. Had another person um, at $20,000 a month with a single client. Had a woman recently close an $18,500 client. Another one on $11,550 client. Whew. I mean, we got wins after wins. Uh, we've got folks that are in, that are prospecting, they've got proposals out, and they're going to be leaving their full-time employer. We've got agency owners that are looking to um, just create more predictable revenue for themselves while they grow their agency. So they're acting as a fractional CMO. It's awesome. If you want our help, I'd love to help you. I've got a great team. We take this really seriously. We really want to help the people who want to be helped. So if that's you, just book a call with my team. Head over to CMOX dot co slash call and book a time with my my team and we'll see if we can help you all right hope you're well take care thank you for joining us for today's show for more information and episodes visit our site at fractional show.com go ahead and punch that like and subscribe button on your favorite podcast app it means a lot at least to my mom 